Hello there, ladies and gents. I'm Michael, and welcome back to Fudge Muppet. Today, I'm excited to bring you yet another Fallout 4 Nuke World DLC build. This is the Pack Mother. Now, before you enjoy watching this video, I'd like to recommend that you watch our incredibly well-received video we spent ages coming up with. It's called The Ideal Fallout New Orleans, and if you like the creativity you always listen to in our builds, then you'll love the ideas you hear about when you watch that video. The link is in the first line of the description, and after you click it, it will open up the video in a new tab without closing this one. Speaking of which, the Pack Mother is a deadly predator, and will go to any length to ensure the survival and prosperity of her kin. She nurtures those close to her, acting as a protective guardian regardless of the circumstance, but she is a brutal beast to anyone who opposes her. She shuns intelligence, putting absolute faith in her instincts, and in the heat of battle she strikes with an unrivaled ravenous barbarity. Her style may not be strategic in any sense of the word, but that only makes her unpredictable. The foes who obsess over semantics die in stunned surprise when the Pack Mother defies all odds. As someone who acts on impulse over logic, the Pack Mother's playstyle focuses on frenetic attacks with high action point costs. She will opt for power attacks over VATs, and this will be viable with sufficient agility, offensive perks, and aerodynamic apparel. The build also possesses a variety of natural resistances, so just like a wild animal, she's fully prepared for whatever her environment and her hyper-aggressive attitude brings. As always, timestamps can be found in the description for ease of access throughout the video. Now time for you to enjoy the backstory. The Pack Mother was born into an impoverished family. Her mother struggled to hold down work while her father served in stints in the US Armed Forces. The Pack Mother was the eldest of four siblings, all born a year apart. At the young age of eight, word returned of her father's death on the front lines, and this drove the family into a downward spiral. Soon later, her mother died of natural causes, believed to be onset by grief. The Pack Mother was old enough to know what happens to children in these situations. The authorities would get involved, and the children would be taken into care, soon to be put up for fostering or adoption like puppies in a pet shop window. The Pack Mother was forced to mature years overnight, and rather than allowing child protection to separate the four of them, they took to a life on the streets of Boston. For over a year, the four children lived in the gutters, living off whatever scraps and leftovers the Pack Mother could scavenge from local bakeries and restaurants. While complacent patrons laughed over fine dining and fresh chilled wine, the Pack Mother dug through discarded, stale leavings. She knew little of luxury, she only had the energy to spare for survival. Over the course of their time on the streets, she became very capable of sustaining and protecting her siblings from the perils of the city, until one particular day. It was the peak of the Boston winter. The wind carried a ferocious edge, and the snows that brought endless joy to the average child brought nothing but hardship to the four young ragamuffins. The pack mother was becoming desperate, struggling to find enough food to keep the four of them alive. She settled for some rather foul-smelling scraps thrown into the alleyway behind the local Gwinnett restaurant. Little did she know, this gave the starving children food poisoning. What would be considered a minor inconvenience to most proved fatal to the children. Her brothers and sisters did not survive that night, and she broke down, fighting the onslaught of stomach cramps as tears welled in her eyes. The next day, she was found on the curb, producing guttural groans as she fought against the lethal sickness. The man who found her was clearly contacting child services, but the pack mother didn't have the strength to resist. She was soon fostered into a home, fortunate enough to be part of a supportive family. It took her many years to overcome the trauma of her childhood, but by the time she had the opportunity to enroll in high school, she'd turned her grief into a drive to learn. She always had a suspicion that it was no coincidence that the grief had caused her mother's death and despite the pain, she didn't want to end up the same way. School was no breeze for the pack mother. She'd been significantly disadvantaged and had learned basic numeracy and literacy while her peers were dealing with algebra and Shakespeare. She persevered nevertheless. She decided she wanted to pursue law, specifically family law, so that she could strive to protect underprivileged children but considering her lackluster intelligence, this was a steep ambition. Though it took her twice as many years as most, she did in fact graduate with a degree in law, scraping passes against all odds. She was compelled by sheer will and determination. During her time studying, she met a bright-eyed young man who aspired to change the world. He had decided to defer from university to fight for his country. The pack mother endeared his passion and good heart, 
believing that he resembled her birth father, or what little she remembered of him. When he returned from service, they settled down together to raise a family. When Sean enters their lives, she feels a resurgence of the instincts and intuition she had attained from her childhood. They were painful memories, but the pack mother was resolute that she would let nothing come between her and the well-being of her family ever again. That was, of course, until the 23rd of October, 2077, when no amount of willpower would be able to stop the imminent dawn of all-out nuclear war. When the Pack Mother awakes from stasis and discovers the state of the Commonwealth, it brings back the feeling of utter hopelessness she felt living on the streets as a child. This new world wasn't going to do her any favors, and fortunately, she won't waste any time with the vain hope that it will. She is the veteran of tenacity and resolve in a seemingly hopeless existence, and the wasteland of former Boston is nothing she can't handle. Her first instinct when leaving the vault is to track down her son. She vowed to herself that she would never fail to protect her own, and she intends to stay true to this, if that's even possible. Therefore, her primary goal is to follow the path to Sean, doing anything and everything she must to reach him. Evidently, she will side with the Institute. Even though she doesn't fully understand their motivations, she understands looking out for her own, and she will do this until the main storyline is exhausted. Once her duty is done here, she is absolutely destroyed by what happens to her son. She will once again feel hopeless, although this time it has a much bigger impact on her mental state. She will now put in place measures to make sure nothing is ever taken from her ever again. She's in a kill or be killed world, and while she is hyper aggressive, she hasn't been acting dominant enough. She will turn her attention to the surface and endeavor to find a pack, a family she can adopt and protect passionately in these treacherous times. This will lead her to Nuka World. Upon arriving here, she will relate to the values of the pack and she will work with them in their efforts to own the wasteland. The way the pack approach leadership with an internal hierarchy that emphasizes the importance of merit and strength appeals to the pack mother. She has a respect for the success of the predominantly female disciples faction, so she won't work in direct opposition to them. However, she perceives the operators similar to the wealthy restaurant patrons of her childhood, motivated solely by the acquisition of wealth, and she will therefore have no issue crushing them. We know that the pack mother is an adept in adversity, but how does this translate to her stats? When you venture out into the Commonwealth, the Pack Mother's start game special stats will be 10 Strength, 1 Perception, 7 Endurance, 3 Charisma, 1 Intelligence, 5 Agility, and 1 Luck. The special book in Sean's room should be invested into Charisma so that the Pack Mother can reap the rewards of the Attack Dog perk early on. First off though, we have 10 points of Strength. Starvation wasn't the only danger of living day by day in the slums of inner Boston. Being one group of homeless kids in an enormous homeless population meant that it often descended into a primal competition of survival of the fittest. The pack mother and her siblings may have been younger than the rest, but she showed she was more than capable of warding off unwanted attention from the human vultures of the streets driven to crime and cruelty as a result of desperation. It was only an inevitable bout of misfortune that beat them in the end, and she was strong enough to hang on and salvage her life. In a similar vein, the Pack Mother has seven points of endurance, which when bolstered by two perk points and the endurance bobblehead will soon be up to 10. While the world may not have technically fallen to rubble until the bombs dropped in 2077, the Pack Mother had remained resilient, living without parental guidance in an urban wasteland. She proved her durability when food and fresh water was hard to come by, and predators lurked around every corner, and this was all before her 10th birthday. She had unknowingly prepared for the post-war lifestyle years before the other inhabitants of the Commonwealth. As a result, this maternal survivalist will rely heavily on her high strength and endurance to rise to the top of the pack. The pack mother isn't renowned for her alluring personality, but she does possess a certain primitive charm. She doesn't form intellectual bonds with others, but there is an unspoken connection between her and those she aligns with. This outlook on relationships makes her loyable and reliable, like a dog. For this reason, she'll be able to capitalize on her charisma to get the most from companions, like dog meat. After acquiring the special book, you'll have 4 points of charisma to work with. You'll also be boasting a respectable 5 points of agility. So while she's not necessarily an expert of tactically identifying vulnerable body parts, her past has granted her an uncanny ability to act on impulses instantly. Like a wolf clawing rapidly at every opportunity, she is fast, evasive, and attacks with rampant ferocity. It may not be an incredibly measured and calculated approach, but killing doesn't need to be stylish to be effective. 
As for the essential perks, the pack mother will opt for skills that complement her cutthroat in your face playstyle, ravaging foes while tolerating immense pain. So coming in hot from the strength stat line, we have big leagues. The pack mother's combat choices will revolve around melee weapons. With all five ranks of this perk, she'll dish out double damage with them. There's also a chance she'll cripple her opponent, or with a particularly clean hit, she might just grand slam their head clean off. Pursuing those enemies to stick them with your weapon sounds dangerous, but with the rooted perk maxed out, you'll gain plus 50 damage resistance, and melee or unarmed attacks will deal 50% more damage when standing still. In addition, while standing still, the ballsy bastards who don't run for their lives immediately will have a chance of being automatically disarmed when using melee weapons against you. During the street urchin days, improvised weapons were the only way to fend off assailants. And it's funny how little has changed for the pack mother since then. Also from the strength stat line, we have Armra and Blacksmith. With these fully optimized, she'll be able to use what Mother Nature leaves lying around to craft mods for her arms and armor, vastly improving her combat effectiveness. Next up is Endurance. As we've mentioned before, it's recommended that you drop two points into the base stat, rounding it off to 10 when merged with the bobblehead. After that, the pack mother's instincts can take hold, and the elements will have little effect on her well-being. You want to invest in the toughness perk for 50 more points of damage resistance. In conjunction with this, there's Life Giver. At rank 3, you get 60 more base health, and you'll slowly regenerate lost health over time. Should your travels ever take you to the beautifully murky waters of Boston, the first rank of Aqua Girl will ensure that you take no radiation damage in the process, plus you'll miraculously be able to breathe underwater. While radiation may not have been a problem of paramount importance before the bombs dropped, the Pack Mother's adaptability means it won't be giving her any sleepless nights. Taking all four levels of the Rad Resistant perk provides a permanent boost of plus 40 radiation resistance. Her knack for braving the elements seemed to have stretched to her bones, and with the Adamantium Skeleton perk maxed, she'll no longer take any limb damage in and out of combat. It's no exaggeration that the Pack Mother is almost entirely unfazed by the Wasteland, but to top it off, it only takes a hint of vitamin D to have her feeling spry after a troubling encounter. So lastly, from Endurance, we have Solar Powered. Rank 3 grants plus 2 strength and endurance between the hours of 6am and 6pm, and sunlight slowly recovers lost health and heals radiation damage. As we touched on before, the Pack Mother has a unique charisma about her. She inspires unwavering loyalty from her canine companion, and she feels a neurological connection to beings with ingrained pack mentality. Now, this doesn't translate to the majority of humans very well, but she isn't interested in that anyway. Therefore, we suggest dropping 3 points into the Lone Wanderer perk and 4 into Attack Dog. With 3 in Lone Wanderer, the Pack Mother will have an increased carry weight of 100 pounds, she'll take 30% less damage across the board, and she'll dish out 25% more damage. As for maxing out Attack Dog, Dog Meat will hold enemies still during combat, potentially crippling or causing them to bleed. Additionally, thanks to the Nuka World DLC's new perk ranks, adventuring with Dog Meat will allow you to take 10% less damage. Lastly, but not leastly, from the intelligence stat line, we have two more essential perks, the first being Action Girl. The Pack Mother does not specialize in VAT's combat, but with the action point regeneration provided by this perk, you will be able to keep on hitting without fear of fatigue. More specifically, at rank 3, action points regen 75% faster. The second perk is Moving Target. We know that we specialize in a bestial fighting style, consuming stamina at a rapid pace. Once maxed, this perk gives plus 50 damage and energy resistance while sprinting, and sprinting costs 50% fewer action points. On a side note, following the quest choices earlier will result in the Pack Mother siding with the Pack while keeping the Disciples in relatively good favor. Doing so will guarantee her the Pack Alpha perk and the Chosen Disciple perk, which will greatly benefit her playstyle. The former awards plus 25% damage while unarmed or using melee weapons, and increases damage resistance by 25%. The latter will restore some action points with every kill made by a melee weapon. Not including gear, but including all bobbleheads, the Pack Mother's end game special stats will be 11 strength, 2 perception, 10 endurance, 5 charisma, 2 intelligence, 6 agility, and 2 luck. Now that we have our fully fleshed out, perked up Pack Mother, let's take a look at the aesthetic. In terms of apparel, you'll want to track down a harness as well as any assortment of useful raider, metal, or leather armor pieces. This shouldn't be much of an issue at all, and you'll find plenty of these in Concord. Now as you progress to Nuka World, however, the goal is to equip the harness, pack shawl, and pack jaguar helmet. 
On top of this, you'll want the pack left and right arm with the aerodynamic and improved mods on and the pack stuffed legs with the cushioned and improved mods on. This look is as tribal and feral as you can get and it sums up the pack mother perfectly. Being stalked by the pack mother in this outfit would make the scariest horror movie look like a kid's show and not even an M. Night Shyamalan twist could stop her from securing the kill. As for her arsenal, the pack mother will wield a heavy, sharp sledgehammer with the painted upgrade for the ultimate Technicolor aesthetic. You may find more powerful sledgehammers throughout the Nuke World DLC that would usually require the science perk to forge, so feel free to pick those up if you find them. Due to her strength and aptitude to improvise, don't be afraid to change things up. The essential perks will deem almost every melee weapon effective, so focus on the characteristics of the environment and prey relentlessly on your enemies. Also, while you're in Nuka World, look out for the Scav Issue 5 magazine near the theater at Dry Rock Gulch. This provides a huge plus 3 to strength and endurance when you have under 100 caps. The Pack Mother's Life of Poverty may have a silver lining after all. With the Lone Wanderer perk and the Attack Dog perk, the Pack Mother benefits from traveling with her canine companion Dogmeat, so don't worry about any other companions. As for settlements, the Pack Mother isn't concerned with building. She's a scavenger and a killer, and will do what she needs to do so her clan can thrive. Therefore, she'll assist the pack in overthrowing already established settlements across the wasteland. Thanks to the Soup Mutant Vendor in the Far Harbor DLC, you'll also have the option to buy some hounds in order to protect your turf in typical primal fashion. And that concludes yet another Fudge Muppet Fallout build. This was the Pack Mother, designed specially for the Nuka World DLC. If you enjoyed this video and you're new around here, feel free to show your support with a like and a share after you subscribe. Scoot on down to the description for the perk list as well as the timestamps and our social media. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Michael and I'll see you next time.